Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Smoked Beef Short Ribs with Chimichurri. So today we're going to be smoking ourselves a big old brontosaurus bone sized beef short rib rack of ribs and these are one of my favorite cuts of beef to cook because I love how crusty you can get the outside without doing any harm to the inside. There's just so much fat running through the middle of these things that they stay moist and juicy until the end. So we're going to be cooking these things open the entire time, no wrapping involved. We're doing it on the Kamado Joe, so let's get started. All right, here we have our ribs. This is a master chef choice from Creekstone Farms. Really great piece of meat. One of the things I love about beef ribs is you really don't have to do much to it to get it prepared. Now you might notice right here, we, we catch a little bit of silver skin underneath there. This is one of the rare moments where I'm just going to kind of let it be. See, I really like all of the fat that's on the outside of this. And we're just going to score this up and season the outside. And we'll find that in the end, the caramelization that happens in that fat is worth the trade off of picking around a little bit of silver skin. Now, if you don't want to worry about that, just take it all off. Just know that you're also going to lose the fat on the outside. So I'm just going to do some light trimming, anything that's hanging off the edges here. But for the most part, we're just going to leave this the way it is. Since this silver skin is exposed without any fat on top of it, I'll go ahead and take that spot off. But really throughout, it's not like this is covered in silver skin. There's just a few places where you're gonna find that. Now as far as this nice fat goes, we're just gonna score this like I said. So we'll take our knife and cut right through that layer of fat, kind of down to the meat. This is also gonna look really cool as it opens up. You get this really cool texture on the top of here. Another thing that this does is if you run into where you've got some silver skin on there or something, so now you'd only be taking off like one little square of silver skin rather than a big piece of it. Not much else to do on the top here. Let's flip it over and look at the other side. So here's another optional thing you can do. There's a membrane on the back side of these bones. You can leave it on, you don't have to take it off. Today I am going to take it off and I'll tell you why. So there's pretty much not really any meat that you're gonna be eating from the bottom side of the bones. Most of it sits right on top. So by taking this off, we expose these bones so that you can pull the meat right off them here at the end rather than pull this whole sheet off at the end. Again, it's just a preference thing. We're almost doing the opposite on the other side, so don't feel like there's a right or wrong way. I would just suggest doing it a couple different ways and seeing what you like. So now what you're gonna find is, just put a little slit here. As you start to smoke these, these bones, they're just gonna pop right out. Now as far as the flavor profile goes on these, there's any number of ways you could go. You could stick with kind of a classic salt and pepper Texas kind of rib. You could do something a little more Kansas City style where you do a slightly sweeter and also salty barbecue rub. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to start with a really nice savory base like salt, pepper, garlic. And then we're going to go on the top of that with some coffee based steak rub. So it's got turbinado sugar and coffee in it as well as some chipotle. So really earthy flavors but also with a savory base. All right, so we're going to hit this with a little bit of hot sauce for binder today. Now you could use any kind of binder you like, mustard, even oil. Uh, I like this hot sauce. This is a smoky, uh, smoky red chili sauce, Flay Volcano. You're not going to get a ton of that flavor in the end, but it's a great flavor profile anyway. And maybe we just incorporate some of it into the end product, who knows. All right, so we've got our thin layer of binder. We're going to start off with Killer Hogs, the AP rub. So this is our savory base, our salt, pepper, garlic. Very fine seasoning, so it goes down first. We'll let it attach to the meat before we add the Cattleman's Grill Smoky Chipotle, which has got much more texture to it. Mm -hmm. Make sure that's attached. Then we're going to start to add our coffee-based steak rub. Now you'll find in the end that this isn't overwhelming with the coffee flavor. One of the things I really like about this rub, especially with beef, is it just adds such a great earthy element to it. You can see those chunks of turbinado sugar in there as well. 
those really help to create some caramelization on the surface. The bark on this is gonna be unbelievable. All right, so that's attached nicely. We're gonna move this over to the other side. We'll get this edge while we're here. And we're gonna go at this a couple times because we've got all these score marks. So I'm gonna kinda work this in, move things around a little bit. This fat on the outside that's moving around, it's gonna melt off anyway, but this thicker fat's gonna stay attached and that's what's gonna really caramelize nicely on the top of these beef ribs. So we'll work that in just a little bit and we can immediately come in here and work in our Cattleman's Grill smoky Chipotle. Work it into the crevices there. And then we'll go one more time. That nice crest on the outside. All right, that's it. So today we'll be smoking on the Kamado Joe Classic 3 here. We've got this set up for indirect cooking, so we've got that slow rolling system in place. I've stabilized it at 300 degrees and we're gonna add some wood. So we'll slide the top off here. And then we've got our Cattleman's Grill wood chunks. These are kiln dried so that they're really great for smoking. There's no acrid smoke that comes out of these. We just wanna nestle these right into our fire down here. Today we've got cherry wood chunks, but you could use whatever you like. If it's hickory that you like, go for that. Pecan would be great. And then we're just gonna give this a minute. We wanna see these ignite before we put the lid back on. So immediately we have some smoke, which is a good sign, but we wanna see a flame before we close this. So if you wanna expedite this process, what you can do is close the lid, slide the top wide open as well as the bottom. And I'm gonna do this one more time so you guys can see the difference. This is with it closed mostly down. Look how that smoke's moving. When we open it wide open, immediately starts coming out faster, right? So it's feeding it air. So this is just about two minutes of wide open. You can see we're not getting too hot. We're going to try and keep it under 300. And now as soon as that oxygen hits, we have combustion. We're ready to put the lid back on. All right, so now we'll get our grates on. We'll close the airflow back down. We're just going to make sure we're stabilized at about 275. And in the meantime, that rub is attaching to the meat. We want to give that five minutes or so to do that. And it's going to be ready to go on. Now, the cooking process is just about as easy as the seasoning process was. There's not much work to it. So we're going to let this smoke open probably for about five to six hours until it's probed tender. Nothing to it. So right there in the center, we'll close her up, make sure it's stabilized. And we'll be back to check on it probably about three hours just to see how it's progressing, give you guys a little progress report. All right, guys, we're a little more than three and a half hours into this cook now. We've been running at about 300, just a little bit below, so things are moving a little faster than if you were going, say, at 250, which is totally doable, but for what we're doing today, three and a half hours in at 300 degrees now, I want to show you guys what the bark on this thing looks like. I assume some of you just gasped at home because... It looks so dang good. Look at that, all that fat rendering out. Incredible bark on the outside. And since we put that cut on those bones, they're even starting to pop off. Now, if you want your bone to stay attached, just don't make that cut initially and, and you can serve it on the bone. But we're actually gonna be slicing this to serve. So I want those bones to be easily removable. And you can see on the surface here how we've got some of these spots where that fat's just really caramelized. And since we made those scores, we've also got seasoning that's worked its way down into the meat as well. So if you wanted to, at this point, you could go ahead and wrap this up, either in foil or butcher paper. You could expedite the process of finishing it and cook a little bit faster. But because of the fat content inside of these beef ribs, we really don't need to do that. We're not worried about it drying out. There's a ton of fat in there that's still breaking down. If I probe this now, I could show you that the internal temperature is probably around 180 degrees, so we've still got another 20, 25 degrees to go to hit our finishing temperature, which is gonna be around 200 to 205. We'll actually be probing for doneness, but it'll be in that range. For now, what I wanna let you guys know, wrap it if you wanna speed it up. If you have the time, don't worry about it. Today, I'm gonna make a chimichurri sauce to serve with our beef ribs. They don't need a sauce. You've probably inhaled the whole thing without a sauce, but 
The chimichurri that we're gonna make today is a really great pairing with beef ribs because the acidity of it really cuts through the fattiness of the beef. So these are some of the ingredients we're using today. When it comes to chimichurri, the stuff you gotta have is some parsley, some garlic, oregano, and some red wine vinegar. Now there's different variations, so these, you know, there's no set rules, but this is what we're gonna use today as well as some red onions, some capers, and we're gonna start this all off with some jalapenos. Now we're gonna fire roast these jalapenos and normally I would just do this on the grill, but since our grill's occupied right now, I'm gonna show you a little trick you can do instead. Get that torch out. I don't know if you have one of these sitting around the house, but we use it all the time when it comes to grilling applications. And what you're looking to do is just blacken up the skin, blister it and blacken it. So we've got the surface fully blackened and essentially what we're doing here is allowing us the ability to release the skin from the flesh. So the flesh will be slightly softened after we steam this in a bag and then we can scrape off all that black stuff. What we end up with is the tender flesh of the jalapeno without the skin on the outside which can add an odd texture to the chimichurri. All right, so one by one, get them in our little baggie here, seal it up so that they can steam off. We start with the peppers so that they can steam in that bag while we put everything else together. Here we've got a bunch of parsley. We're gonna take pretty much all of it. We'll just leave kind of the stems behind. I'm not even gonna bother chopping it just straight into the Vitamix. Now continuing with the herbs, we want to add some fresh oregano. Uh, with the oregano though, you only wanna add the leaves or the soft stems, you don't want the woody stems, so we'll get rid of those and this will take a minute to strip all of these, but we're going for about a quarter cup. All right, so we'll throw our oregano in there. Moving on. We're gonna add six cloves of garlic. All right, now I don't care to chop these up. We're just gonna crush them and get rid of the skins. Next, I'm gonna add some red onion and we'll do about three quarters of a cup of diced red onion. Next, I've got a couple tablespoons of capers. So those will add a lot of brininess to all of the fresh flavors that we have going on so far. Next, I'm gonna be adding about a tablespoon of our Cattleman's Grill eight second ride. So this is gonna add a little bit of chili flavor to that and a little bit of redness. Then we've got our red wine vinegar. We're gonna add a quarter cup. And now we should be ready to peel our jalapenos. So you see how the skin just comes right off of those now. We're left with a fairly fresh but tenderized flesh of the pepper. But we've also got this subtle smokiness that's been added. And we'll just give these a rough chop before we throw them in the blender. Now if you're worried about this being too much spice, you can cut back, just do one, or even switch over to something like an Anaheim or a milder green chili. Now the only remaining ingredient that we have is our olive oil, but before we add that, we're gonna blitz all of this up. I'm gonna measure out two thirds cup of our extra virgin olive oil. And with this running, we're just gonna slowly drizzle it in. You'll really start to see the chimichurri take on a lighter color. There we go, a 
really coming together now. All right, so I'm just gonna scrape down the sides and we'll incorporate all of that, but this is essentially what we're going for. We're doing a nice pureed chimichurri. If you want it more rustic, you could do all of this by hand. It's just totally up to you. All right, let's get a taste. Ooh, that's really nice. Great acidic bite to it. The heat's pretty mild, really. I bet it builds on you a little bit. The fat really helps to deliver all of those flavors throughout your mouth because fat coats your mouth with everything that it's carrying in there. I'm gonna say it doesn't need salt. We're really close. I think with the saltiness of the meat, we're not gonna need to add any extra. We're now five hours and 15 minutes into the cook. It's probing super tender, so I wanna give you guys a look. Ooh. Incredible crust on the outside. And just so little resistance when we're probing. So we don't want this thing to fall apart completely, right? We want to be able to cut some slices out of it. So we're probably looking for right around that 200 range and probe tender. We got that dark, dark bark today. It's looking good. Oh, I love the jiggle going on over here. We can't cut into it just yet. It needs a little time to rest. So I'm just gonna cover it with some paper. Loosely, it doesn't have to be fully enclosed. We'll let this rest for about half an hour. All right, we've given the meat some time to rest, so we're gonna slice it open. Ooh. All right, let's flip this over. I'll show you guys the bone side. And those are just ready to come right off of there. This one, not so much. There we go. So there's some tough membrane stuff under here that you don't really wanna eat. Again, if you were wanting to be serving these bone on just for presentation's sake, just make sure you don't cut into that membrane and it'll all stay intact. But like I said, what we're looking to do is get some slices out of this. Oh man. Just super tender. And look at that. All of those juices that are still in there. But we haven't broken this so far down that it's just falling apart, so it has a nice chew to it at the same time. And if we take a thinner slice here, you can kind of show off just like you would a brisket slice that hang. See how it just hangs flat? And that slice at about pencil thickness. And if you give it a tug, it just, boom, comes right apart. So again, we've got this really hearty bark on the outside. If you guys are used to something softer, just go ahead and wrap it somewhere in that process. But for those of you that are looking for that nice, crispy, dark bark, unwrap the whole way is the way to go. All right, let's have a taste. Whoa, that's tender. Super juicy, great contrast with the crunch on the outside. And that chimichurri, and it cuts right through the fat very herbaceous. You get in the oregano, the parsley. It just cuts everything so well, really well balanced. So that's it. The beef short ribs, super easy process. Please give it a try. Let us know how it goes. Tag us if you're posting pictures. We appreciate seeing all that stuff. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.